Hello, I'm Sylvia. I'm the Ecosystem Restoration Camp, Camp of the Plano coordinator at the moment. So this is the first of the ponds, the biggest one. This is Bailey doing some monitoring of plants. Over there is the, this one is the chicken tractor. Um, and there are the cows and this one is the kitchen. This one is the bunkhouse where most people could stay over. And next to it, there's the roundhouse. On this line straight, there's all the other ponds, which I'm gonna show you. The benefits of having the ponds are multiple. Um, the first is that they're collecting rainwater coming from the surrounding catchment. Uh, so it's uh, also a control of erosion. It increases uh, the humidity in the soil around it as the water infiltrates. That in turn increases the organic matter around because there's more vegetation and that's also increasing soil quality around the ponds. It's also a place for wildlife. You see there's a little frog here in the middle. Uh, there's birds coming to breed here, snakes and a lot of tadpoles, foxes and wild boars are coming to drink at the ponds. And it's also a very nice recreational spot. This used to be a greenhouse for vegetables, but we're not actually doing the vegetable garden at the moment. Although there's still harvest from last year. Cows! So we are experimenting now with holistic management, so we have patches on the camp where we have had cows grazing for a few days and as you see this patch in front of us has just been eaten and the sturdier uh, plants are the ones that survive um, and we have to find a balance in between the amount of time the cows spend on the land and the amount of food they have so that they actually improve the soil by the manure that the cows are bringing and by the moving of the ground that the cows do. Here we have the almonds tree trees with the ground cover around the cover crops are turning yellow because summer is coming and the service of, uh, of the ground cover is to protect the soil, to keep the moisture in and there's a, a lot of tap rooting um, plants so they basically break through the soil and, uh, and make a better structure for the trees and there's nitrogen fixing uh, species which are um, again a source of they, they, they collect nitrogen, make it available for other plants, so they make it available for the trees. And what we're going to do is these cover crops are seeding, so they're going to have seeds coming out and spread through the land. We're going to be able to cut the grasses and leave them on the ground as mulch, again, to protect it and to keep the moisture in. And this is going to be also a source of organic matter for the ground to, again, Im improve the texture of the soil, to improve the quality of the soil and biomass and more nutrients for the trees that are growing here. One thing we have seen though is that there's almond trees that have been planted at the same time as these ones that are uh, on the neighboring land and they're actually doing better than these ones and what we think is that young trees uh, that are uh, planted here and uh, the ground cover is not managed in such harsh conditions as we are with low rainfall to 150 millimeters average per year uh, and very hot summers there's too much competition with the ground cover and the trees so some type of management of the ground cover would be needed for example possibilities are of tilling part of the strips in between the almond trees tilling around the trees but leaving a strip in the middle uh, so there's no need actually to till the whole plot and to plow uh, very deeply these are our compost toilets we have three separate toilets and we only use one at a time. So I can show you the system. We have a separation for pee and poop. The pee goes in a barrel, which ends up in this compartment. And whenever the barrel is full, which is this one, we can tap it out, mix it in a ratio 1 to 10 with water and use it as a fertilizer. So here you see the three different compartments of the three different toilets. We use one at a time because when one is full, uh, we let it sit for a year and in that period 
the temperature can reach up to 70 degrees and kill all the pathogens and then the poo can be used as compost for the trees. So once one compartment is full, we move to the next toilet. And now we can see how the toilet looks like from the inside. Here it is. A really simple, nice, comfortable toilet. And this is the kitchen, the car <laughs> and the kitchen. It's completely functional. It has a gas stove, fridge, solar panels that are on top of this roof, which are giving electricity to the whole camp. The outdoor shower that we built, so it uses water from the pond and it gets heated up in this uh, black bucket. And then there's an electric uh, shower head, so we connect it to electricity and it basically pumps the water out of the bucket and gets you a nice shower. And here we go into the kitchen. Voila! So this is it, and we don't have water, so all the water we have for drinking uh, comes from the farm, uh, four or five kilometers away, and um, yeah, some of the washing water we can get from the ponds. And we have a nice view. So this is the bunkhouse, which as I said at the moment is not ready inside for hosting people, but it will be. It's very pretty, very messy also. So here there will be beds. And here the camp ends, and this is the roundhouse. Here it is. <laughs> this is Belly. She's living here at the moment. There is a super nice ceiling with wood. Everything is cob. We have a little fireplace. So this is the other place for hosting people. With really nice views outside. And that's it. The idea of the camp is to be a place to train people about uh, land restoration practices. Uh, it's to have a place where people can experience and learn and also an example area for, uh, for whoever comes from outside, but also for locals um, to share uh, what their knowledge is and to uh, see what works and what not in uh, ecosystem regeneration.